for show. Yeah. Okay, if you've played before, you already know what's up, all right? Tonight, I'm gonna ask you 12 questions. They start out easy, but they get harder than trying to figure out what's going on with Jesse Small Lips. Okay? You got 10 seconds to tap the correct answer, get all of them right, and you win HQ Trivia. Tonight, we got $5,000 up for the taking. How much of that money will you be making? Hmm, <laughs> that's 5,000 smackaroonies. You know what's cool? Getting points and leveling up. You tell me what level you're at right now. Let me know in the chat. Let me see what level y'all at. Come on now. I want to see the levels, baby. You want to make it higher? Well, you can. Now you can buy points multipliers. The more points you earn, the higher the level. The higher the level, the better chance you have to win season three. You know what I'm saying? That makes sense. It's pretty dope. Okay, we got about two minutes and 42 seconds till the game gets started. So let's, uh, let's see. Uh, we got some games coming up this week. Tomorrow, we got the 100. Huh? Yeah, that means every winner gets at least $50. And this Thursday, it's Star Wars night on HQ Trivia, baby. Yeah! First, we have Trivia at 9 p.m. Eastern, followed by Words at 9.30 p.m. Two out of this galaxy games you don't want to miss, okay? Y'all follow us on Twitter? If you don't, you might want to start because things are getting crazy over there, babies. It's HQ theme madness! Yeah! We got theme bracket polls live on the Twitter right now. Will Shrek take down Lady Gaga? It's up to you. Go to at HQ Trivia on Twitter and clock in your votes. The winner will have its very own theme night right here on HQ. That's crazy. How about y'all check out this little movie thing? You went to bed grown and then you woke up... No. To everyone else who's a child, start acting like it. I'll be just fine. Yeah, be there to boss of me. Say one more thing. You can't me. My, me or my mom. Yes! Start spanking your kids. Little. Rated PG-13. Oh, yeah. That's Little. It's coming to theater soon. From the producers of Girls Trip. Oh, let's do something fun. Yeah. I'm a bird. I'm a bird. <laughs> This is my HQ victory dance. Here you go. Oh, yeah. I just want some money. I just want some money. I'll flip the money. Gotta flip the... Um, um, um. Oh, salmon. You know what tastes better than salmon? Extra lives. Oh, yeah. This is my... This is another victory dance I like to do. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes your palms itch. That means you're getting money. But when your booty itch, <laughs> you need a shower. Up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a, it's a lizard. It's a, it's a blizzard. <laughs> yeah. Fly like an eagle to the tree. What did the five lizards say to the tree? Smack! <laughs> Charlie Murphy! <laughs> oh, what? What's this? The macaques? Look at those snowy macaques. Just cleaning each other and loving that hot spring. Oh, macaque is cold. <laughs> okay. Oh, that was, that was a new thing. You know, right. It's getting close to that time, baby. We got about 15 seconds till we start the game. So if you're ready, let me hear you say, yeah! Babies, hope y'all are ready too. We got over 400,000 people in the game. Nothing to it, but to HQ it. Let's kick it off with question number one, shall we? According to an old saying, what does every cloud have? Silver lining, attitude problem, or cash bar? <laughs> what does every cloud have, y'all? <laughs> According to that old saying, we gonna see. I mean, they say every cloud has a silver lining, and I guess that's nice. But you know what would be really nice? A cash bar. Yep, squeeze, just wring out a cumulus and get a little Ciroc. Mmm, tasty. Oh, what, tell us what clouds you think have the best liquor in the chat. <laughs> 365,236 just got that one right. You're moving on to question number two. Here we go. Which is best suited for warm weather? Anorak, balaclava, or bikini? Huh? What's it gonna be? One of these you wear when it's warm. I don't know. I do know, but I can't tell you. Cause 
it's trivia. I know some people are going to get this wrong, and I'm going to laugh at each and every one of you. All right, warm weather is coming back to the Northern Hemisphere, so make sure you're ready. Go get them, the, the, you know, the storage boxes, get them out, and try on those bikinis, babies. Bikinis. 320,086, y'all got that right. About 61,000 of you thought it was an anorak. That's like a, that's like a parker that you pull over and got no zipper, and a balaclava is not, it's not for warm weather either. It's like a face thing. Uh... Send, slide in my DMs and send me some sexy, sexy balaclava pics, y'all. Yeah. Question number three. Leave it to me. Here we go. Which is not a real kind of genetic material? SNA, RNA, or DNA? What's it going to be? Time is ticking. So y'all got to figure out, figure out which one you're going to tap. Okay? We wouldn't even be here without those useful NAs. Molecules that can make copies of themselves. DNA stands for deoxyribonucleic acid. Or you can forget the deoxy and just have ribonucleic acid. RNA. That's like a lot of the girls I went to high school with that left early. They became nothing against RNAs. They're very important. Uh, but systems network architecture, SNA, that's uh, it's not genetic. SNA is the right answer there, babies. 346,923 in the place to be. Whoop de whoop de wee. Yep. Y'all got that one. I'm so proud of y'all. SNA. If you don't know what SNA means and you have a guess, let me know in the chat. I want to see what y'all think. Uh, sniffing new armpits. I love acronyms. Oh, man. Okay. Ready for question four? Let's get it. Who is the U.S. president giving this speech? Check it out. We have the opportunity to move not only toward the rich society and the powerful society, but upward to the great society. Who the heck is that? Let's see. Is it Franklin D. Roosevelt, Lyndon B. Johnson, or Dwight D. Eisenhower? See if y'all know your presidents. Get your answer and tap it, lock it in. Yeah. <laughs> All right. If you're a history buff. Great society is the only clue you need. That was the focus of the 1964 speech by President LBJ. Yeah. Lyndon Johnson, y'all. Lyndon Johnson. 283,648 are feeling great. That was question four that we just got through. So, uh, <laughs> y'all know what that means, <laughs> right? Yeah, okay. You know what it means. It's time for question five. I, 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 question five, question five. I, 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 question five. I, I, I. Woo! That was new. We just got that today. Shout out to my man Rusty who made that. That was dope. Love you, Rusty. Okay, question five. What flavor of Lifesavers candy creates vivid blue sparks if you hit it with a hammer? Hmm? Window green, butter rum, or pineapple? What's it gonna be? Window green, butter rum, or pineapple? Whacking lifesavers with a hammer. How did they find out that this was a thing? We're gonna see. All right, the phenomenon at work is triboluminescence. Yes, that's the creation of light by disrupting chemical bonds. Sugar crystals can create super tiny sparks, but the effect is multiplied with a fluorescent compound like wintergreen. Take a look! Woo! It's electric! Boogie, woogie, woogie! And you can't hold it! Do -do 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 -do. But you know it's there! Question five on it. I love that. That's fun. 305,667 just got that right. I'm proud of y'all. You're killing the game, babies. It's time for question number six. Uh, let's get it. Let's get it. Here we go. Which animal is scientifically labeled as a unicorn? The Manitoban elk, African buffalo, or Indian rhinoceros? What's it gonna be? Hmm? Huh? Do you know? I hope you tapped the right answer. Okay. Hey, the word translates to one horn, which means the answer here is the creature with one horn, like uh, protuberance. That's the Indian rhino, baby. He's got one horn. Indian rhinoceros was the answer there. 
Be proud of yourself. 287,485. Just got it right. You stand alive. I'm proud of y'all. Let's keep it moving. Question number siete. Damas y caballeros, voy a la playa. That's it, baby. What happened? Okay, question seven. A popular internet theory holds that Get Out is set in the same world as what other film? Kazam, Donnie Darko, or Being John Malkovich? What's it gonna be? Get Out. Remember she was stirring a little, she's stirring a little, uh, little tea cup. Yeah, I don't even drink tea no more because of that movie. Hmm. Yes, I do. I love tea. All right. Let's see. Being able to inhabit another person's body. All right. Uh, Catherine Keener. Well, there's so many similarities that, that when Jordan Peele was asked if Get Out was in the same universe as being John Malkovich, he said, as far as I'm concerned, it's true. Being John Malkovich was the answer there, baby. Let's see how many of y'all got that one. Resolite. Tenizite. Woo! Savage question song. That's what it is. Let's go to work. Savage question song. Sorry you got it wrong. Savage question song. There's a savage question song. Savage question. Look at me go, Nick. <laughs> 94,376 got that one right. I am so proud. You did it. Question number eight. Feeling great. Here we go. Who is not one of the two tallest players in NBA history? Yao Ming? George Mursan or Monte Manut Bowl? <laughs> Ooh, who's it going to be? <laughs> One of them hard to pronounce names. That always throws me off, man. I swear I'll be looking at it. I'm like, got it, got it, got it. And as soon as I read it, I'm like, what? What? <sighs> Letters. They so, so trippy. All right. The NBA is America's leading storehouse of really, really tall guys. Specifically, guys who get all the way up to seven feet, seven inches in the case of Manut and George. Uh, but Yao, Yao Shorty Ming is a full inch below that. Yeah. Yao Ming, babies. That's another sad question. Holy crisnap. <laughs> Savage quest price. Yao Ming ain't the right height. Savage quest twice. He's an inch taller than those guys. Shorter than them guys. Woo! Okay. I struggled a bit, but uh, I'm back. Back for you. Here we go. Question number nine. Hope you're feeling fine. What nation is E. Swatini almost surrounded by? South Africa, Zambia, or Somalia? E. Swatini, babies. What's it gonna be? All right, getting this one definitely depends on knowing what E. Swatini is. Of course, last year, that became the new name of Swaziland. Yeah, they were tired of getting Switzerland's mail. <laughs> That's a mail joke. But, name change or no, they're still covered on three sides by South Africa. Home of Trevor Noah. South Africa. Yes, 27,331 just got that. Pat yourself on the back, because you done did it again. Made it all the way to question number 10. Let's go to work. Here we go. Which of these holidays does not have a corresponding Charlie Brown TV special? Arbor Day, Memorial Day, or Hanukkah? Hmm? What's it gonna be? Let's see. After the Christmas, Halloween, and Thanksgiving specials were hits, it was open season on the rest of the calendar. They did everything but Orthodox Apostles Fast, including Memorial Day and Arbor Day, but Hanukkah, Hanukkah got a pass. Hanukkah was the right answer there. 16,860 y'all just nailed it. It's time for question number 11. All dogs go to heaven. That's facts. Don't at me. Believe, <laughs> believe in yourself and the power of dreams. Okay, question 11. Here we go. Who sang the highest note in Queen's Bohemian Rhapsody? Was it Roger Taylor, Brian May, or Freddie Mercury? Hmm? Who's it gonna be, y'all? Let's see. I mean, you expect high notes to come out of Freddie Mercury, but most of Queen had experience in that area. And when the Rhapsody got to Beelzebub has a devil put aside for me, for me, for... Yep. You're hearing the sweet, sweet tones of drummer Roger Taylor. Take a look. That was Roger Taylor, y'all. 
word to your mama. Roger Taylor, 7,056 got that one right. This is technically a savage question, but I don't do it. Come on now. Savage question song. Sorry, you got it wrong. Savage question song. That's the third savage question song. Please don't hate me. <laughs> Please don't hate me. Woo All right. It's time for the last question of the game. Question 12. What's that smell? Smells like money. Follow me, I'm at what's funny. Woo! Question 12. I said question 12. Question 12. Mm. All right, here we go. This 1960s footage is from whose first feature film? Take a look. Is it Steven Spielberg, Francis Ford Coppola, or George Lucas? Give you some time to lock in those answers. It was, a 19, it was 1960s footage from one of those guys' first feature-length film. Okay? Sadly, the complete film is believed lost. But in 1964, a local cinema showed the over two-hour movie Firelight, which turned a, a $1 profit for 17-year-old Steven Spielberg. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Steven! 3,372 just won HQ! Oh yeah, baby! <laughs> That's a good game right there. I think that, yeah, that's, that was a good one. Mm-hmm, I liked it. I feel good. My tie was crooked. I feel good. I feel nice. Ooh, Sharon Ma, you got a dollar 48. Itty bitty fun, you got some money too. K Baker, congratulations. Val Balcom, you got some money. You're welcome, Val Val, Val Balcom. <laughs> D. Gene Bart, congratulations. B. X. M. D. F. Congratulations. Bacon, Bacon Child, Yoshi Shine, you got some money too. All three thousand three hundred seventy-two, y'all, just made it to the HQ leaderboard. You did it. You're here, baby. You're a winner now. I'm so proud. I've been your host, Matt Richards. Follow me on the socials at Matt Was Funny, and don't forget, okay? Words is coming up next at nine thirty with my girl Anna Roisman. So don't go away, babies. Have a nice night. Um, bye bye, hey, hey, bye bye. Woo.